Right, they've been working on this car all day. I've done quite a lot of work to it, done paint work and stuff. Um, I've had it over a year. I've um, been trying to get it running today. We've put a brand new battery on it, which is a six volt battery, which is a hundred pounds. Um, and I've just had a little fire out. We've been messing around with it all day and just got nothing, absolutely nothing. No spark, no nothing. And then I've, I've just took the distributor apart. Well, one last time and I just, I went I went sound on the on the points. I filed them quite a bit because they are a bit worn, but I've ordered some more, but not got them yet. Um, and the sound is perfect as I can and it fired. It actually, we've just got a little bit of rubber room out of it. So, I'm gonna see if it starts. This, is, this car's not been started in approximately seven years, so let's go. Well, it started a little bit. <laughs> probably I did put a bit of fuel down the uh, carburetor, so it's probably that. I'm not too sure if it's actually sucking fuel from the manual petrol pump, which is just to this. I've no idea if it's actually working. It should be. Right, let's try again. I've just put a tiny bit of juice in the carburetor. Not sure if we're getting fuel. Pretty sure we've got no fuel. Let's try turning it. Put a little container on the fuel line. Let's just see if any fuel comes out of the fuel line. absolutely nothing and it's got a manual fuel pump on it, it should work really. Uh. Right, makeshift uh, gravity fed fuel tank, this should do it. <laughs> right, the gravity petrol tank is on the car. I've got a feeling that the manual fuel pump isn't working and for what reason I don't know because it is brand new but I didn't fit it but this should work it should now run so yeah let's go Uh, maybe not.
<laughs> Nearly went. I think the carb one just come off. Carb off. Right then, just detached all the carb and it should just pull off easy peasy. Bit of two bolts and then obviously all the cables. There you go. Ooh. A bit of fuel, so yeah, let's have a look at that, get cleaning it. That gasket for starters I know has gone. So that's not good. That's sucking air in. That's not gonna help. See what it's like internally. Right then, here we go. Uh, day after now. And here is the carburetor. Um, so never ever strip one of these down before. I mostly do most cycle carburetors. I'm pretty good with them. So there isn't really a great deal of difference. But with modern motorcycles, at least you can always get a gasket kit. This, you probably can get a gasket kit for it, but not in this country. You'd have to order it from America, which you can't be bothered with. Scrum, and probably going to have to make gaskets, which shouldn't be too hard. We'll see. I'll try and save it, but you never know. But. So yeah, let's get stripping it down. Get it, give it a good clean. See what it's like inside. So there it is, partially stripped down. Can obviously keep going a bit more. Get that float off, get the float valve out. Some sort of vacuum system here. I'm not too sure I might strip that, but I'm a bit worried I might uh, make it worse. <laughs> Bits in here. Some sort of screw there. I'm not too sure what that is. Maybe some sort of air screw or something. Um, might take that out. Count the turns or something. Like that. But yeah. Gaskets look pretty easy to make. They look like homemade anyway. Yeah, I'll make some of them. So yeah. Need to get clean in it now. There you go. Looking pretty good. Right, I'm going to get on with the last few bases as well. I'm going to get them in the ultrasonic cleaner. So there's another piece done. Look how good that is. Looking like brand new. Oh yeah. And then now we've got the floats. Just watch these come up lovely brass now. better right then it's five weeks later now <laughs> and um, I've made some gaskets for the carbs yeah very important that you make these absolutely perfectly so what I did is I just split the carb I had quite dirty hands so I put some thin sort of printer paper on top of where I wanted to make the gasket and just went down the outline with my finger, which left a perfect outline of the gasket, which was that, yeah? See that? It's a paper gasket. Um, and then I've copied that onto gasket paper, which I think was about 1.5 millimeters thick. I wanted a slightly thick uh, gasket paper um, because the, the, the carb does seem, it's so old, it slightly seems to be a bit warped. So that, that'll take the warping out. But the only reason I'm five weeks late is because of this yeah see look at that that is like a heat dis dissipation plate I think that's the word dissipator di heat dissipation plate and um, which goes on the manifold I'll just show you I, I had a bit of a play with it and it disintegrated and I was like oh you bugger I tried leaving it off should have probably just left it alone but it was probably what I'd replace him really anyway because it could have been just leaking a bit and if they're leaking that's obviously um, a fire hazard so uh, yeah so I've just cleaned all this as you can see I've got a cloth in there stopping any bits coming up I've, I've given this a right good clean it was all black and they went to put this on and it won't fit so I've widened the holes very slightly just drilled them myself and um, this is the proper stuff for dissipating the heat um, so you cannot use metal because I, I said to the um, engineers, I said, I was just going to make an aluminium one. And he was like, no, 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 you can't do that because it, it, it'll, it'll get too hot. And then that'll heat the carb up. And next thing you'll have your petrol boiling over. 
won't work. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to have this, which keeps the carb cool. So that fits on there nicely, as you can see there. That, that is 41.3 millimeters, that hole there. So we need to make a gasket for either side. And also you've got these little things here, little sort of tabs, um, which are a bit of a pain in the ass. But yeah, I could do a cutting a bit out for them as well, because the engineers never did that. So yeah, this just needs to do that, make some gaskets, get it fitted, see if it starts. This is the second gasket I've made, so I just uh, use that as a template. I've used a wood chisel, which is circular, to do the, um, the circular bit. I've drilled these two, the drill bit, just need to cut, cut, cut it out now. go Ta -da. <laughs> get it on the car first gasket yeah cut the little bits out there for the little metal flap things whatever they are there you go they fit on nice that i've cut that out there i didn't do the best of jobs unfortunately but hopefully it's going to seal so that, that goes on there and then that, that goes on there obviously well, I've got some ex exhaust paste here, which is old, but it is soft still. And I'm going to put a bit of exhaust paste around these two here. Because I've messed up this uh, heat plate up a bit. As you can see, uh, it's not the best. I just did it with an angle grinder. And then I did it with a bit of a file. Um, just in case it's going to leak around here. I'm going to coat this with exhaust paste. I think I think that will give it a good seal. Don't really want to be using silicon because it, this is so close to the exhaust, it's going to get really hot. So I'm thinking exhaust paste. Yeah, someone might laugh and say, what are you using that for? But I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to try it. Hopefully it'll be all right. The seal the carb is on. I also got a brand new six volt battery, which was 185 pounds. It's an Optima, which is apparently the best six volt battery. Um, and it wouldn't start last time. I did. I did think there was problems with the fuel pump, but I've had a look at the fuel pump, and um, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the fuel pump. Yeah. So that's it down there. It's brand new. I think it was the cranking of the battery because the other battery was 600 cold cranking amps, and this one here is over 800. That's what it says it on it. CCA 815, which is cold cranking amps. So I'm hoping this will crank it a bit faster and the petrol, the petrol pump will work a bit better. I've only put it straight into a, into that there, which has got quite a bit of fuel in it. Not use the tank because I don't know how, how old the fuel is really. Once it's draining, that does. And a uh, new fuel putting in. But yeah, let's just have a see and just uh, <laughs> see what happens. See if it starts. You never know. I'm not going to put any fuel straight in the carburetor this time. I just thought it was a bit risky that for fire, but yeah, let, let's just have a go, see what it does. Right, the fingers crossed, you never know. It's nearly going dark and it's freezing cold, it's got this daft hat on, but there, let's go. Still not cranking fast enough that. Like. There's no absolutely no fuel there, so as soon as there's a bit of fuel there, once the engine just fires that little bit, it'll help the starter motor. God knows where I'm gonna get a new starter motor because obviously all the parts are in America, that might help a new starter. That battery I thought would definitely turn it over a bit better than that. Could it? Yeah yesterday I eventually tried to start it with a gravity fed fuel tank but it just started leaking fuel all around here and I was thinking I've done something wrong with that with that gasket at the bottom but 
I've now rigged up this, look at this. <laughs> Got petrol tank here, I took it off. Because I was just thinking, right, if I can fill the car up with fuel, I might be able to see where the fuel's coming out and sort of find out what's wrong with it. But it's now, now it's deciding that it's not leaking whatsoever. So, that can only really mean that the floats were sticking, which, I, I, like I say, I, I've been a motorcycle mechanic for years, but I've never really worked on cars like this. So, that's telling me that because I've had it in pieces, they just stuck that little bit. Sometimes it happens with motorbikes. They just stick. And when you put them back together, they just stick a bit. You just literally need to tap them a bit and then they sort themselves out. They've just somehow got the like, tiniest bit lodged. And then they're right and they're great for ages. So that's, that's good news. So I'm thinking it doesn't actually leak. It was just the float. So really what I should have done is just tap the carb. But never mind. So yeah, let's get it back on again. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the carb full. Um, because obviously I've been trying to start with an empty carb and hoping the fuel's going to come through with that terrible flipping start motor and battery. Uh, it's that new battery, but the start motor's still terrible. There is one. I've seen one in America on eBay. It's flipping over 200 quid, though. But it is a reconditioned one, which I think will work on this. Um, it says 1946, 1947, 1948. Chevrolets. Um, flat Fleet Masters and that, 6 volt. Um, so, yeah, probably need one. But, um, yeah, let's, let's get it fitted. Fill up the carb. See what happens. Yeah, just put the car back on. It's full of petrol. Manual fuel pump is attached to the can over there. So I'm hoping it's going to start. So I've not really thought to start try and start with a full carburetor before, um, which is rather stupid of me, really. It's really you've got to think of it like a carburetor motorcycle in, in my mind, anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's, trying to start with an empty car, it's not going to work. Now. Flat battery. So if I've had the battery on charge overnight, it might turn a bit quicker, you never know. So yeah, let's give it a go anyway. So <laughs> fingers crossed. <sighs> <laughs> Start mode is terrible. I need to get the start mode back to something. Just tighten the main wire is going to the solenoid. You never know. I might put a bit more fuel in it direct. We'll see.
years old that engine. It's got on this makeshift little petrol tank here. Travis fed, no leaks there. Brilliant. I just realised the choke was on a tiny bit and that's just made it that even bit that little bit even smoother just been well after with that all that messing around there just suddenly went probably because of this <laughs> but if you were still some left that was a litre that but I can't imagine a litre lasting long with this thing doing the rest of the work now and know it runs get the brakes working get the boot lid on it that needs putting on get the back window in it get all the lights working do the interior and eventually go for a blast hopefully go for a spin so yeah um yeah just subscribe to the channel and then you should get part two if you want to watch it so yeah see you soon <laughs>